Well hello people, so it's Peter here, uh, we're back down in the old man shed, <laughs> it's uh, Sunday evening, pitch black outside so the door is shut, now, I've got the heating on, it's getting up to a nice, uh, well what are we getting up with, 17, 18 degrees, so it's quite comfortable but I still put my fleece on, this is the one I put on when I come down to the shed, that's why you see it so often, um, but yeah so I've come down here to make a film of uh, and some run, got some running clips together, but the film is to sort of um, show the new loco that's joined Torridon Road's fleet, and that of course is the new Cavalex Class 56. Okay, so I've got the model uh, large logo which is 56120, so it's the one you know, blue, blue with the yellow ends and with large logo. Uh, there's there's uh, examples of that running around on the tracks today so it doesn't look out of place on Torridon Road with everything else that we've got so I put that over there but yeah wow what a, what a model guys all right we go into it but um, you know fantastic um, that by the way you can see it's a big box um, it comes packaged on a cradle it's actually screwed to a traveling cradle so it doesn't come in an ice cube box package you know that everything else that you know we know of you know the clamshell ice ice cube uh, packaging style no this this is a, attached on a, a cradle which is screwed on and the result of that was the, the absolutely perfect condition um, livery wise and everything model wise absolutely faultless there's not a glue you know it's perfect and uh, coming in that box, not no pieces off and everything else. You know, yeah, brilliant. Um, I've stuck a driver in it already. That was straightforward to do. I've put all the details on at both ends because I've got a coupling system that I've made that allows me to uh, hook it to the loco's hook itself, and then that can then in turn uh, attach to wagons or coaches. So. I could, you know, there's quite a few models now that I've got running around that have all been detailed at both ends, but it doesn't matter because I've got this little coupling thing that I'll put onto the hook of the loco and it can pull uh, a rake of carriages or coaches. And you'll see, you'll see that I'll demonstrate, you know, show you that on the film how it works and everything like that and the up and coming clips. But um, when this one arrived. I'd had it on pre-order, needless to say, and then uh, there was a big, you know, announcement from Cavalex to say, guys, you know, we've dispatched them all to the uh, retailers, so you should be getting them soon. And sure enough, uh, only a day later, Rails of Sheffield, I got my one delivered, and uh, on Thursday, so I think it was all announced on the Wednesday or maybe Tuesday, and I had it on Thursday, Thursday morning. So brilliant. Uh, but it made me think, I'd, I'd seen this at the uh, Great Electric Train Show, which is when I sort of like got it in mind that I was going to get it. But then of course it's, you know, what's happened since the Great Electric Train Show? Well, five locos now, this is the fifth loco that's joined the Torridon Road fleet. And it's getting a bit, you know, wow. But they're all, what I would say, super locos, all right? Because they're all state of the art. What I'd like to say is state of the art. Um, so just want to go through that with you now so that's that, that's what we do okay so let's have a look at them right so let's have a look at the first one of the five of what I call the super uh, locos which of course is the new Acura Scale class 37 and that's there's the one there the second one is over there in the shed and then of course the third one is sitting there on the rail operators group siding so that's the third 37 so yeah I call them super locos because obviously you know these things are absolutely crammed with uh, features and things you know you've got the light illuminated dashboard and the, the you know one thing another as you know so yeah I, I was classed that as being the, the new generation of the super locos I would think um, so that's those three yes I've had issues but you'll see that when it's, um, you know, I'll demonstrate to you that it's running fine because 
what I've done to the motors and you know guys what I'd, I'd say I've done to the motors is basically to get them running properly again is I serviced the motors okay um, you know it's what we used to do back in the day when you had to uh, you know look at the armature and uh, clean it and uh, change brushes if your brush is worn down it's what it's what was expected of you back in the old days what was called the old pancake the um, is it what the ring field motor you know you could you could strip all those down to you know virtually everything you know so that you could replace parts if you needed parts these the motors that come in these modern locos everybody thinks they're disposable but no you can open them up as i did with this and uh, clean them and they're absolutely running perfectly all three of them and uh, yes so then again because i've got hornby set track i did have to adjust the back to back on the wheels so a little bit of fettling admittedly i could have left it alone but it's running perfectly all right so i'm glad i did rather than send them back because they're perfect locos and it just needed a little bit of attention and they're running fine that's what i did with my hattons class 66s they all needed fettling they never run out the box but they are now six of my best locos in the fleet and they run perfectly after i had to do some work on them um now also with the 37s now as you know Curascale have changed the rules as regards uh, warranty and they're given the lifetime warranty now so if you are worried that you know you might get motor problems developing later on well fear not because look there's my three brand new motors that Curascale sent out so if something does go wrong again with the uh, with the 37 I've, I've got a choice now I'll, I'll either just open it up again and clean it like I did before and that I know will get it working perfectly or maybe I can swap it with one of the new motors and that might be the end of the issue because the you know these are brand new motors so yeah if there was if there was a problem with it you know hopefully one of those might fix it so that's that so that's anyway that's the first of the three out of the way so that's the cura scale then I noticed in Rails of Sheffield was having a bargain sale and then of course what did I find they come out with that loco all right they got Backman to produce the class 47 with the rail operators group um, faded circuit board livery on it and um, you know I wasn't interested in the class 47 before but when it came out with that finish on you know <laughs> it got got my attention straight away so it joined the fleet and with the rest of the rail operators group there in their sidings and um, yeah I call that a super loco as well because it's their new one it's their new mold you know new uh, revamped tooling of the 47 um, so you know it's, it's it's got some whistles and bells it hasn't got the um, it's not the deluxe so I haven't got the tinted windows or the spinning fans but I don't care that's fine but the actual finish of it it ran absolutely it's run perfectly out of the box all I've had to do is obviously fit the old driver in there like I do again wasn't too hard to put the driver in so yeah but that's a lovely livery isn't it on that so yeah it's no brainer but all you know all detailed up ran superbly out of the box never looked back it's it's running absolutely fantastic and then that brings us to this one and uh, well again straight out of the box body shell comes off in it you know so easy same with the uh the cura scale same thing just uh, no screws needed screws needed on the backmans but uh, to get the driver in uh, no screws needed on the uh on the 56 um so the body shell comes off no wires easy straightforward to get the cabin out to put the driver in so that was all i had to do and then uh, fit all the detail parts and uh, you'll see this running um, it's detailed up at both ends but you'll see that doesn't stop me from uh, well i've got a set of um, got a rake of uh, china clay wagons at the moment silver bullets behind it and you'll see that pulling that but yeah and uh, superb absolutely superb so that's it guys just want to do that i'm not gonna waffle on anymore because i've got lots of video clips to put on all right so um not just you know showing this going around 
but showing what I do, how I play shunting and everything, what I, do, <laughs> what I get up to, and uh, yeah, some and then some other bits added to the running clips. All right, so I'm going to keep this um, shorter than hopefully normal. You know, just leave it all to the uh, let the film uh, do all the talking. I've done enough talking. But, okay, so there we go. So you can see I fit the driver. He's he's the Batman one that I painted up. So he's got his high vis vest on and everything let's see if we can without uh, getting the lights on there so you can see there's a driver in there it's fitting nicely there we are that's it so that's good a wealth of detail as regards all the the bits that you've got to attach including this plate here that you've got to do first of all which covers the entrance to the uh, NEM pocket all right see so if you see underneath there's the NEM pocket there, but of course it's got this fascia plate which plugs into it and seals it. But it's all these little coupling pipes, all these um, air pipes. And they've got to be put on in a certain way, guys, because you can see there's not a lot of room between each pipe. So follow the instructions that's in the manual. It shows you to attach it exactly like this and then they will fit. But something I just wanted to show, because it's got a nice little coupling hook, right, that you have to push in. But this still coupling hook moves. Look, you can do that. <laughs> Just like the real thing because it can pivot. Amazing. I mean, that's, that's, that's the detail that um, Cavalex has gone to. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And where the, uh, the screws were fitted to the underneath, you get, you know, even that, it wouldn't have mattered, does it? Because you've got a hole there. But no, they provide you with the little plugs to do that. And then just to show you that the other end, oh, there's the magnet, it's fallen off. It's uh, there, and I've done nothing to the hook on that end either. It can still piv pivot, just like the real thing does. But that's where I normally, you know, that's where the magnet, but again, so all the pipe works on, because I don't, you know, it doesn't matter with what I, how I run it. It's super detailed up. So when she runs light, she looks absolutely stunning but I can also have it pulling and of course down there there's two fans in there that they work stunning and now the drive these wheels float they're not drivable right this is an eight wheel drive loco but uh, 12 wheel pickup is that right yeah three six yeah 12 so it picks up on all wheels and it doesn't pick up with uh, wipers on the back you can see I think it picks up from the axles you can see the uh, the pickups can't you underneath going along so uh, yeah so no wipers on the back of the wheels they don't pick up that way and this one which would suit Charlie at um, Chadwick Charlie Bishop at Chadwick would suit him down to the ground because this wheel is not driven and it floats and uh, think therefore you know it's got more movement in it than the other either side because they're the driven ones so the issue that Charlie's having at chat with it wouldn't happen with this loco because they've Cavalax have gone to the uh, idea of having an eight wheel drive with the middle one to, for more reliability got much more movement on the middle one but of course you don't see that there's the detail on the uh, side frames absolutely stunning um, the grills are, you know you can see through the grills it's, it's open and uh, yeah, oh, it's just it's, it's fabulous. Right, let's put the running clips on then, and so I'll, I'll put her back and have her running around. Okay, so that's it, guys. But that's that's the detail. I mean, it's absolutely stunning, absolutely gorgeous. But then I'm biased because I bought it, <laughs> so I would be, wouldn't I? There we go. Right, people obviously a lot of people say, Oh, it needs a good weathering. No, I'm not bothering about weathering. I love my locos to be pristine. I know it might look even better if it was weathered, and you probably would see more of the details if you put a little bit of uh, you know grime along the, on the bogey frames, it would probably stand out even more than what it is. But yeah, get the light in the right way, and you can see the detail that's on there. But uh, no, I don't do uh, weathering, right? Okay. Right, so what we do first, we bring the 56 off the shed, 
because we're going to couple it up to a rake of china clay wagons all right the uh, the silver bullets i think they called yes so start her up Give a single toot. And everything's on at the moment, so you get flange squeal automatically. And of course with the tight curves that I've got with all the point work and everything, it does make it go off and it's very noisy. You can turn it off if you want. So I'm going to bring her out past the signal box and I've got to change the points. There's the silver bullets waiting for it. Right, past the points. So she's a light engine at the moment, so she's got her red lights on at the back at the moment. I'm going to change the points. And yes, it's all manual. My points aren't electric. I can reach them all from where I operated from, you see, so I'm lazy. Right, change direction. Single two. Here we go. in front of us right, that'll do it, stop it there got to go back, change the point so that she will run back onto her train and now also I'm going to just bring it forward again a little bit more because you can't see where the coupling is where I'm going to do you're going to see me do it all so let me move it forward again you can see there's no coupling there it's all detailed up same as the other end there we go but of course I've got my little coupling that I, that I use and that goes on the hook like that and now change the direction and now we can roll back onto the silver bullets change of direction turn the red lights off at the back of the loco because she's not a light engine anymore and now I'm going to put her into heavy train mode all right so she's going to have a little bit of a thrash before I actually move it away so you'll hear that you can't move until you hear the engine red so let's do that Are you hear the engine note rise? And of course she's put in the train because I put my coupling system on. 
and that's what I can do with all my detailed locos so they might have details at both ends so there's no tension lock or uh, you know whatever but that doesn't matter and of course the last one's got a flashing end of train lamp on obviously had to do didn't it so there we go so I'll shut up now you can turn off the heavy engine thing once it gets going so I'll turn it off so you can hear the notes so now it's going to go around nicely now I'm going to when it, I'm going to turn the sound off the engine because it's silent this loco is silent and we'll go over some of the features in a second so I'm turning the engine off. You can hear how quiet it is in the house. Right, look, listen to this. It's silent. All you can hear is the clickety clack of the of the wagons. Not even the loco itself you can hear. It's amazing. Really good. There's me a curious gal. Nothing wrong with that. That's working fine. Might have that running in a minute as well. Right, I'm going to bring the 56 round now so we have a little look. Right, here we go. So there's my loco system. There it is. I'll just put it away. All right, see, it's a magnet. There you go. Yes, the gap is a little bit excessive because you've got to allow for that because you still don't want to get buffer lock as it goes round the tight curves. So that's as best I can get when you actually, you know, because this is not using the kinematic coupling system that's actually fitted to the loco, uh, it's got a pivot straight from the, um, the coupling hook itself. So you have to give that a little bit more play. But there you are. And it can push as well as pull. You see, because it's a magnet, it doesn't collapse, you know. It moves a little bit, but it doesn't actually collapse like a kinematic coupling would with a tension lock fitted and get all screwed up and uh, tangled up on you. No, it doesn't. But there you go. Uh, so, yeah, the two trains. So, the, yeah, the 37, good as gold. We're running at, uh, oh let's just show you the old good old um, amp meter showing you that the 37 is running well and so is this new loco because there's no spiking going on. So she's just over half an amp but the 5 is quite constant, it's not going up and down. There we are. So two trains running, half an amp. So just wanted to prove to you that the 37 is running absolutely perfectly as well, but so is this thing. It's gorgeous. And of course that 37 again is um, detailed up at both ends, it's got the snow cloud fixed. But um, you know, once again Pete has done something special with a coupling on the wagon, so therefore it can attach to the, uh, the hook of the loco and go round. The second radius curve no less. So there you go. So with all my locos, as soon as I get a new loco, the first thing that happens is the tension locks get taken out. I get throw them away. Well, I don't throw them away, but I hate the bloody things. And then you see why. I don't need to. I don't need them. 